we have another location just right down the street, not even half a mile from here, that's opening with, with social golf. So the market is, uh, is huge, is not, is not slowing down. Uh, so obviously people in the club business like myself are happy about that. Well, Disney may be the happiest place on earth. Pickleball, the happiest sport on earth as we are underway here in our men's singles quarterfinal between Jack Foster and Zane Ford. Foster the three seed, Ford the six seed. And Sean, you've seen this game grow. You've been involved with it for numerous years now. What's the biggest difference that you're seeing now with two players like this on court right now, Jack Foster and Zane Ford? You know what I love about this sport is that it's evolving to separate itself from tennis. And the technique is constantly changing. And even then it's, tr it's starting to create its own mentality. And that's why I love, love this game so much. Before getting up for that one, those are some fast hands. Well, yeah, again, you talk about that mentality and, and pickleball having its own mentality now, right? Like there was a time where it was like you're in like a, a, a catch-22, like in between. Talk a little bit about that, where you're saw, seeing that pickleball mentality rather than anything else. Well, I think before you would basically get on the court, and if you see someone with good coordination, good racket coordination, you would automatically feel you're down love 30 or 0-3. And now you get out there and you see a person with tennis technique and you go, wow, they're going to swing big. They're going to make more mistakes. So they have a different strategy to beating them. Foster read the big swing from Ford right there, able to get the winner. Jack Foster, again, just playing nice and big at that kitchen line. He's going to get there, take control of that kitchen line, use his athleticism, not the tallest or longest, but uses his footwork to his advantage. Got a gift there from Ford on the missed return. Goes back down the line, and Foster has opened up a four-point lead. That was a massive forehand. What a big swing. Holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> and an early timeout from Zane Ford as Jack Foster has controlled this men's singles quarterfinal from the beginning. Foster up 7-2 on the six-seed Ford. And that's what you see, you mentioned it, Sean, is the big swing of Jack Foster. You typically don't see that a lot in pickleball. It's more of a compact swing. Are you seeing players do that more, or is it just kind of where we got a one-off here with Jack Foster? Are you seeing more compact with what you see here at the club, too? It's interesting because on the pickleball side, you're seeing shorter swings evolve until they get to a pro level. Then the swings become a little bigger. Mm -hmm. And on the tennis side, you start seeing shorter swings. So it's kind of the opposite. Right. <laughs> But I think that eventually we will see more professional table tennis players playing pickleball because I think their game is actually closer to pickleball than tennis is. Why do you say that? I think, well, first of all, is, is the court itself. You right. play the game just like you're playing table tennis. And the serve plays a big role, but it's the technique is underhand. Right. And that's another part. I like that comparison. I really do, and uh, you're exactly right. Well, we've seen that a little bit as well. Will Sobeck, his dad, Rosty, is Foster gets that just inside the line. Dad, Foster, Fo Rosty comes from, Foster and Rosty are too, clo too close together. <laughs> too close. Comes from that badminton or that uh, table tennis background, and we've seen it in Will's game. Yeah, you have. Oh, Foster just having his way with Ford. There's no hiding his big forehand, right? So Ford knows what's coming. He just doesn't know where it's going. Foster's holding that paddle face closed and almost last second picking where he's going with that ball. Foster called it wide. Well, Dom, how much does it surprise you, though, the way that Ford has struggled? Because Ford has that tennis background as well and has been known to play with that big style. Well, Jack is streaky. And when Jack's on a, a, a good streak, like where he's placing the ball right now is perfect. And when he's on that streak... It's very tough to stop him. Foster on an absolute heater. He's opened up a nine-point advantage, 11-2, here in this first game of the men's singles quarterfinal. It's a good overhead there from Ford to earn the side out. Jack's weight transfer on the forehand side is just textbook. Big serve there from Ford. And that weight transfer that you mentioned there, Sean, 
talking about his weight coming forward through the ball, correct? Yeah, transferring the weight from the right leg to the left and as going forward, also going up to make sure the ball releases. Oh, Foster putting it right where he wants it, side out. A little cat and mouse there with Ford and Foster, and you don't see that much anymore because of these big hitters, right? You used to see that a lot three, four years ago. The cat and mouse were up at the kitchen line going back and forth. Went for a big forehand there, but caught the tape. I feel also that pickleball is a lot more physical when it comes to singles compared to tennis. So I would think that players will start traveling more with their trainers than actual coaches. Ford misses the backhand there. Why do you say that in terms of pickleball singles being more physical than tennis? You stay lo lower for a much longer period, and your downtime in between points is very little compared to tennis. I can see that. I can feel my quads burning just hearing <laughs> you say that as Foster <laughs> misses the forehand. Well, I compare a lot of when you talk about tennis to pickleball, I always talk about tennis is almost like a track team, right? If you're a sprinter and a long-distance runner, you're on the same team, but you don't run the same events. And tennis is that, that distance runner, and pickleball is the sprinter. Oh, that's, wow. oh, that's a beautiful <laughs> winner from Ford. That's but, beautiful. But, yeah, you see that different. It's different. It's totally different as far as conditioning goes. Pickleball is like a sprint. It's constantly. You said, Sean, not a lot of time in between points, so action's happening very quickly. Foster pushing forward back. Well, key on that ball right there is that Foster takes that ball in the corner out of the air. He doesn't allow Ford to get back in and get his feet set, so he takes his ball there, pushes that ball down the line instead of letting it bounce and letting Ford get set. And taking time away from your opponent. It's a classic tactic. Yep. Game point for Foster. Gets it on the big serve as Foster takes game one in Dominant fashion, 15-7, Sean Boletari. It's been a joy having you in Thank the booth. You. Thank you so much for Thank joining us. Much. And make sure you at home don't go anywhere else. We've got more action next. People play pickleball for exercise, competition, or to hang out with friends. What your reason is doesn't matter to Gamma. What matters is that you play, that you enjoy playing with passion, and you have so much fun you can't wait to play again. At Gamma, we offer paddles perfect for all levels, including yours. Because pickleball is about you, the player, and what feels right. Pickleball is your game. Make Gamma your paddle. Play to live. Live to play. Gamma Pickleball. Since I've been using uh, Leo Rubber, I, I've had way less problem on my AT band and hips. If I had to describe it in a few words, I would say it's a must, it's effective, and it's stylish. A typical insurance? You're just a Senior. That is the third health insurance commercial with seniors at a farmer's market. Right? Don't get me wrong, I love a fresh heirloom, but it's like those companies think we're all the same. That's why I chose Humana. Before I signed up, I spoke to someone who actually listened to what I needed. She told me about benefits that were right for me, like vision and dental, all in my budget. I finally feel in control. What are you doing? Taking control. <laughs> Humana, a more human way to health care. Nothing makes a gathering great like Eggland's best eggs. They're just so delicious. With better nutrition, too. For us, it's eggs any style. As long as they're the best. Eggland's best. of his time to volunteering at the APP Women's Open. Eric said, quote, being a part of this APP event was one of the first chances I had to give back to a sport that has given my family so much. And it would have been inconceivable two years ago to think that I could be as active as I am today. Thank you, Eric, for all that you do. You are a champion in the community and the sport of pickleball. Well, this is exactly what Ford needs to do. He needs to get off to a good start here. Foster was hot, 
pretty much throughout that whole first game. Nice touch there from Foster. Again, Foster controlling that kitchen line nicely. He did that in game one to come out on top by. Do the math, Dom. Eight. Carry the Quick. one. Yep, eight. Well, Foss is definitely one of those plays that it's dangerous to have him serving because he has one of the biggest serves. There are times where it's going to stay flat. It's going to kick up. Ford had a lot of issues in game one with the return. Another monster forehand off of the paddle of Foster. Three one. Oh yeah, that was down. Just wide. Foster, Foster babied that backhand just a little bit. So smart <laughs> from Foster. Just the court coverage from Foster. Just when I thought that Ford had passed him, Foster all over it using every inch of reach he's got there. And Dom, you mentioned Foster, a difficult player to play when he's feeling hot. It's not just this match. His round of 16, he bageled Eduardo Irizarry. Love and love. Zero, zero. That's... It was, a, it was a retirement. Oh, oh. I was going to say. Like, <laughs> like, they don't make that, they make that note in the bracket. It, it like, is. It's right there. It's like, just in small letters. Uh, but I was technically, say, this this is Foster's first match. I was going to say, Chad, <laughs> like, you and I could accidentally score a point and rally score it. Like, I could score a point on accident. No, it was it was a retirement. I'm not sure what happened with Irizarry. Ford did play. He topped Spencer Lanier in straight he games. Yeah. Oh, he was tested there in game two. One, one 16, game two, 16-14. Yep. Again, that big serve. Ford is trying to rush on that return. And with the big serve of Foster, it's not something that you can try and move into because you're just cutting down your timing even more. You took the words right out of my mouth as Ford takes another timeout. I was going to ask you what is giving Ford so many issues about the Foster serve. So flip that. What does he need to do differently? Execute the return first and then move to the kitchen line. Right now, he's so worried about getting up to the kitchen line and being able to control the point that he's rushing through the first execution. You know, if anything, take half a step back. Give yourself a fraction more time so you can move into it a little bit. But right now, he is rushing into that bolt and just ultimately jamming himself up. Well, similar to what we saw in the last match with Cangelosi and Manthau, and Manthau wasn't getting yep. his returns deep enough, and Cangelosi was taking advantage of that and stepping into it and ripping that third shot. And, Don, we had talked about the progression of pickleball and where it's going in these bigger forehands, these bigger serves as a player, or do you think these players are feeling a little bit more pressure now as another missed return there? We talked about that in the timeout with Cangelosi and Manthau, mm -hmm. that Manthau needed to return deeper. He hit it long. We do the same thing. Ford hits it long. So A couple now, of missed returns there. But if you look at the size of Ford's backswing, the length of the backswing, with the pace that Foster is giving him, he has to shorten up that backswing and look for a longer finish, a longer extension. Right now he's so big on the backswing that he's catching that ball late and getting close to the body. And instead of the backswing giving him the power, the, the extension the serves, the, the, is, is what's going you use the pace of your opponent. Exactly. The serve's already giving you the power. You just need that extension to get the ball deeper. It pushes it. it wide off the backhand side. Had the ATP there, but again, he's so deep. And so, like, that's not an ATP you typically get. So you're judging, try and judge how hard do I need to hit this? What do I need to do with it? Foster in control here in game number two, up by seven. Make it eight as another long return. That's already three return errors made by Foster or Ford rather in the last five points. Yeah, and the 
The serve is Foster's biggest weapon. That and that and his big forehand. So you're saying he's Andy Roddick on a pickleball it's, court. It's right on cue. Chad, <laughs> Chad says his serve and says his forehand. He hits a huge serve I mean, and hits a huge he's, forehand. He's been putting a lot of work into his backhand because you know, over the years it's been known that you want to try and go to Foster's backhand. But still, his forehand remains the big, the big power. And tracked down the backhand there, but it gave Ford an easy put away to get back on serve. And still an eight-point lead for Foster after he took game one at 15 to 7. I'm pretty sure Foster went to the store and got that beach towel when they got here to Newport <laughs> because they were in Boise with us for about four days and he was using our hand towels. <laughs> Oh, oh, that ball had so much side spin. Did you guys see that? Yeah. <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah, I think Jack and Amanda have been on the road now for over a week, week oh. and a half. Oh, yeah. They went from Vegas. They came to us in Boise for five days, played the Fine Pickle Open, and then now here. They haven't been home in a long time. I'd probably say two weeks now. Well, they, they do live in our front house, so yeah, I didn't yeah. know when they left. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, unkind net cord for Ford, and it brings up a match point for Jack Foster. Yeah, actually, they've been on the road since Dallas. Yeah? They didn't come back to, uh, to Tennessee after Dallas. So Ford able to stay alive for the moment. It will freeze Foster at 14. Fellas, which one's a little bit more surprising in their score? The first match we saw in the round of 16 between Manthau and Cangelosi or this one? This, uh, I think this one. Yeah, this one for sure. Because I, I think that Ford can hit his way out of things, but Foster's reading everything really well, right? He's anticipating well where Ford can't pass him right now. Like, it's almost next to impossible. But you saw on that last point, what did Ford do to get the winner? He had a cross-court drop shot. And then after he hit it, he's pointing at his head. And I think he's thinking, I can't pass him. I've got to try and change something up. So that drop shot, I think he's going to yeah, try and implement something here. something below the net. Right. For a player that knows that he can hit his way out of things, though, how difficult is it to go against that initial inclination to go big? Uh, it, it's very difficult. And... and you know, we talked about Foster's big serve and big forehand, but his court cover, his his kitchen coverage, the the way he he can take balls out of the air and, and put pressure on with the volley. When you try to hit through him, you feed him exactly what you, what he wants. You know, if you get a ball down below the net, force him to start hitting up. That volley does not become as effective as the ones above the net. And for for Ford, you know, he's come out and he's used to hitting the ball past people really inserting that power so and again and right there the, yeah the the ball is shoulder high and all Foss has to do is get on top of it and punches it back to the baseline whereas if you get something that's might not be as powerful but it's it's below the net now if foster tries to keep him keep four db he steps up takes the ball out of the air puts the pressure on Foster finds the back corner and dispatches Zane Ford in straight games. 15-7, 15-6. We will hear from Foster when we come back here on Championship Court. You're watching the Al APP Newport Beach Open.
Introducing Persona IQ, the Smart Knee. Address your knee pain with a replacement that contains sensors which capture helpful information such as your range of motion, stride length, walking speed, and step count to ensure your new knee is performing at its best. It keeps you connected to your healthcare team so you can receive important reminders and personalized recovery guidance. It's not a GPS. It doesn't collect where you've been or where you're going. Persona IQ, a smarter way to regain mobility. In this city, flavor is a way of life. And every dish is a work of art. La Victoria, inspired by LA Flavor since 1917. Jack Foster through to the semifinals in straight games as we take a look at the gamma live to play rally of the match. Yeah, Foster did an excellent job of, of getting that ball below the net. Ford didn't have any answer for it. Couple that with the big serve. Foster moving on in the semifinals. We're going to throw it down to Dominic Catalano, who's caught side for our Franklin post match interview. Talking off court. It's one of the cleanest games I've seen you play in a while. What was the difference in this match against Zane? Yeah, um, I was fortunate to play really clean there. Zayden gave me a little bit. Uh, he's a great player. He's gotten so much better in the past year since I first played him and uh, served well. Didn't really miss many passes, and I got a little bit lucky on some volley covers. I didn't really miss many volleys, and that kind of made the difference. Now moving into your next matchup, you got Grayson Golden, who just defeated Will Howells. You had a couple words between Grayson Golden and you in between this, this match and this interview. What are you guys going into that match going to be looking forward to? Yeah, it's always a good match. I feel like I play Grayson almost every other tournament in the semis. Uh, he's really good, unpredictable player, so much power. And, uh, yeah, if I have to go out there and play this clean to have a chance against him, but do my best. All right, congratulations, Jack. We'll take a quick break, have our next matchup here at the OWL APP Newport Beach Open. <laughs> 